Joel Plaskett, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm well. Nice to see you, Tom. Nice to see you too. How's everything in Dartmouth? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 rolling. It seems pretty good. You know, streets are a little emptier than usual, but everybody, you know, my family's home and healthy. We're we're good. I'm so glad to hear. It. Jeez, I, you know, I've been thinking about you guys a lot the past week in Nova Scotia, of course. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's been a challenging time for the whole province. Uh, and the degrees of separation in this province, as you probably know, I'm sure like Newfoundland is pretty small. Uh, so I know a couple of people who knew folks who were involved and victims. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know anybody personally, but uh, it, I have a feeling that probably just about everybody you talk to is going to know somebody somewhere who's deeply affected by it. It's pretty tragic, man. Just kind of, uh, yeah, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, but I'm lost for words, so... Yeah, I know. I think what's what's been really amazing about it is it's sort of like a typical sort of maritime or Atlantic Canadian fashion. It's been really lovely to see musicians kind of step up and and it's nice to see like the 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 legitimate power that like music can actually have in these moments. Like I think we like to pretend that music has a lot of power, but then in these moments when you you can actually bring comfort to somebody, it's very meaningful. Uh I mean, I think music solace for me in a lot of ways um and uh it, and it has felt sort of like a challenge right now with things like live shows being hemmed in to know what to do with yourself. But um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, hard times can bring out, uh, it can bring out the best in people it can bring out, it can, it can, it, but it, I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I feel like mu- music, it, it's something different to everybody, but at the same time, it, it, uh, it it's like, uh, it can be pretty therapeutic drawing too i've been trying to draw i've never drawn <laughs> in my life really i've been sitting trying to do some drawing at night just to kind of calm myself down do, do you know, have something there you drew can i see it? no you can't see any of it. it's terrible but no I, it's <laughs> funny I, we got my we got my my son like a uh one of those like apple pencils so you can draw on an ipad and i've been doing that like just doodling on an ipad i mean it sounds ridiculous but i found it to be uh just get my mind off of you know, off of just just away somewhere else, focus on something for a little bit because yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, I, it makes me think about it because I want to talk about this record forty four that you put out, this quadruple record. Is that some of the album art behind you right now? Yeah, I figured for this interview, I'd set up um, in front of this shelf of uh, uh, that I sort of put together for the album arts, memories of photographs and books, and you know. It's a lot of things that connect to different songs, some at tangents for sure. But yeah, I, I spent a long time working on this uh, earlier, uh, mid last year. And so it had been sort of boxed up. But as the album got closer, I set it up again. And uh, it's like a it's, a, it's my little portal into into memory lane, you know? Yeah, I feel like I can see a bit of the uh, album, like the album cover art there as well. There is, yeah. So the what, the it, there's like, there's like, four sort of there's two shelves that i got from nyforth's furniture before they closed there was an old furniture store down the road on portland street here these were old like metal shelves from the uh 50s or something had plants on them anyway i took them into the studio and set them up and we shot this shelf through a window my friend ingram barsh took the photographs and got the window over in the corner a four paned window and i wanted it to so I wanted to, to 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 frame it through four panes so that when you put the four panes together you get the complete picture and that's what the album are. So if you've seen the physical copy of the record, there's the box set cover, which, but then the the actual albums themselves go together to create a complete picture, which is this shelf as sh- shot through the window. Um, What's the little head up in the corner there? Uh, which this one here, or yeah, this is some of my wife's pottery. Rebecca does this beautiful pottery, kind of with drawings on it and stuff. So there's like this is there's a candle inside. It's not lit right now, but she did these nice. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of her stuff on there. This is another one of her pieces. Um, drawing a birthday card she gave me for my 44th birthday back here. So there's lots of that stuff. Photo of our, our friend Tim, we lost. Um, some books, some clocks that say 41. You know, I mean, I I got 41, 42, 43, 44. This was like a long. It's a long form art project. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I want. I kind of want to talk about it. So let's let's go to it. So Sorry, say again. I it was lost released you. on April seventeenth. Yeah, the final day of your forty fourth year. It has forty four songs, eleven on each of the four different discs. 
Talk to me about the numbers and the, the numerology and the symmetry here. Well, I've always liked numbers. I mean, I made my record 33 when I was 33, or I mean, it's called three. I made it when I was 33. I was aiming for 33 songs. I put 27 on that record. Um, and uh, so I've always liked that. I'm not really a math person, but I like numbers and I like symmetry. I like balance. I always like trying to set up rooms where there's balance on either side. And um, so I like doing this with the four, the shelves and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I found synchronicities, a lot of them over the last few years. Um, and I tend to put more, not faith in them. You, you, you could chalk them up to coincidence, but I've seen things. I've seen things happen in a in 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 ways through not just involving numbers, but all sorts of things that would lead me to believe that it's like okay, I mean I'm doing this for I'm I'm doing something for a reason. I mean you're always kind of it's interesting like making making things, trying to follow artistic pursuits. It can sometimes feel um, uh, not vain, but you know it's sort of selfish, or you have to kind of go into your interior world to create stuff, and so. Uh, I'm often, I find myself sometimes wondering why I'm doing something. And then occasionally little things would happen out in the world, little synchronicities that would lead me to believe this. Like, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, what did you see? What did you notice? I mean, some of them were just number of things, which you could chalk up to like sheer coincidence. So I, I went down to Memphis to, to do a bunch of work on this record and we were starting on, I was getting to Memphis on, on the day of my 44th birthday. Um, and that wasn't by design. That was the date that happened to work for everybody in Memphis. And so here I'm going to Memphis. I knew at this point I'm making 44, but we're going to start recording in Memphis on the day. And I'm leaving Nashville on my birthday and I'm driving and I get on the 440 Parkway and it turns on to the 40 West and it's like, everything's fours. And it's like I'm 44 and I'm rolling into Memphis to start this record, you know? Um, and it was just sort of, like I kind of chuckled and went, oh yeah, you know, and you could just be tuning in. But it made me kind of go like, well, there, I, I, it felt like some sense of purpose. It might sound sort of, it would be meaningless to anybody else. And I could have chalked it up. I could have just let it go, but I chose to go um, to sort of see, see, see some purpose in that. Then there's been other things where things I've been thinking about um, have suddenly shown up in conversation with people. And I went, oh, I was thinking about that. And now it, here it is like it, making sense of, songs words that i wasn't sure where they were coming from and then a few weeks later there's a song called kingfisher which i was just writing uh i don't know why the word popped into my head one night and it sort of and it wrote itself really really quickly and then i was reading this biography on carl Jung like a month later and it's talking about this he would take these interior journeys in his mind uh he, he had this kind of and and he started he'd get visitations i suppose um and, and, and there was this Philemon, I think, because I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right, but it was the Fisher King, King Fisher, and, it, and this Philemon, who, and Carl Jung was a big believer in the, you know, he, or he, he sort of uh, about the collective unconscious, you know, and the idea mm -hmm. of like these, these archetypes that exist, which I find interesting. And I've been, and so here I am reading about it, and I had just written this song, but I hadn't read about it. So, I'd, and this word had just popped into my head, and all of a sudden, here it is. Could be, could be, could not mean anything, or it could be part of this sort of collective unconscious that Carl Jung was getting at. You know, I mean, uh, you can. Um, I just th those kinds of things. I, I'm, I'm just sort of finding. I, maybe it's just a symptom of getting older, trying to, trying, trying to hold on to something that 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 makes sense of uh, of, of thoughts, emotions, what's going on in the world. All these things. I mean, it, it, it makes sense, and it also like. You know, as you know, I've been a big fan of your, your music for a really long time. And I feel like this is kind of how you make records to me, at least, is that, you know, I feel like I'll hear like a, a great record from you and then you'll tour it for a really long time. And then I'll just find out that you're in your garage or you're just in your studio for a year or two. And I won't see I don't you know, I don't feel like I'm hearing like the sound of the world entering your record or the sound of the radio entering your record. But I feel like when I listen to your records and including these four records, which I listen to, I just hear like the scope of everything you're sort of interested in at the time. You know, sort of out, outside of outside of trends, outside of uh, you know fashion, just sort of like a, a, a purity of your own interest and your own expertise uh, coming out. Well, that's really that's really nice to hear. I will say I don't I don't pay attention to much of what's going on. I don't listen to a lot of contemporary music, 
partly because I don't have time or I'm interested in other things, partly because I don't necessarily want to, I don't want to be affected by something. I didn't want to find out somebody else was working on a quadruple record and all of a sudden it called 44. You know what I mean? I would like to know yeah, right, right. I'm going to do this. I don't want to, there is a good chance. I don't want to tear it apart, you know? Um, but I, I, one, one thing I, I, I work on records with other people, you know, Mo Kenny, Dennis Ellsworth, people that I've produced stuff. I'm, I'm influenced by, people that I work with and local things that I tune into uh, records by friends. I tend to listen to music by friends of mine more than anything else, you know, um, which is kind of an insular little world. And a lot of my interests over the years, um, you know, a lot of my favorite things I, I kind of go back to the things that I discovered in my twenties. Um, and, but then my relationship with them changes and my relationship with my memories and these things I care about is changing as I get older. And so a lot of what I'm interested in doing is, continuing on themes or ideas or following the interests that I've had and, and, and maybe developing them a little bit more. I feel like this record is an extension of things I've thought about, but I think I've presented it in a way that's different. And there's a lot of things I'm thinking about on this record that haven't occurred to me before, you know? Like, like what? Well, I don't know. I, uh, that's a good question. It's a very, it's a very, sorry. I, I know it's four records worth of, I'm asking you about there. Like, I, I, I will I say that I feel like it's a very introspective record. And I know yeah, you've said as much as well, you know? I, I guess, I guess what, what I was, and this is doubling back to where we were a little bit when I was talking about synchronicities, but I guess more like what I found myself thinking about in recent years that hasn't shown up in the same detail on earlier records is the interconnectedness of things. Um, the inter and, and the idea of, I, I've write, I've always written about memories and nostalgia has been part of what I've, so that, that has been there, but my relationship with memories and how they, and how having lost some people over the last few years and there's songs for friends who have come, who've gone on the record, um, the, the music kind of connects me, uh, to the memories of these people, but in a weird sort of way, I feel the presence of, um, uh, of people, uh, uh, you know, when I'm thinking about the songs or working on the artwork and trying to weave it all together, it takes me out of time. It takes it uh, away from just being something in the past. I know that sounds weird because there's, but we think of time as this sort of linear thing as moving forward. But I feel like I can kind of reach out and uh, and 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 be present in my mind, the interior, you can, you can keep things alive in your head and, and it can be, and that can be, uh, good, or it can be a little bit, uh, of an escape and maybe not potentially dangerous. I mean, you know, you could drive yourself crazy yeah. in your own mind if you want. And, and so yeah. I am, but I'm interested in that relationship and how exploring and, and the older you get, the more there is in the rear view mirror, right? You know, there's more yeah, in your mind. There's more in your mind, and so that to me is like you can you can retreat there. You can engage it. You can engage it solely for yourself to kind of restore your energy when you need it. To touch in to touch to kind of reach out and touch the the things that are important to you. You know, um, and that can bring you resilience in the world right now. That's sort of where I. So I've been thinking about that idea. You know, that exploration. Yeah, and it's funny it, it, that makes a lot of sense to me because I was listening to this record and it felt. How do I put this? You, it was interesting to hear you were, use the word nostalgia earlier because it felt like you were present in your past, like you were present in the lives that led you to this point without resorting to weren't Chuck Taylor's good, you know, or, you know, weren't, weren't you right. know, weren't tapes great. Like, I'm, I'm really wary of nostalgia and the sort yeah. of like rose, the rose color that comes with it. And I felt like on this record, I felt you'd be present in everything that brought you to where you are, that sort of introspection, rather than... Yeah, again, uh, you know, weren't weren't Walkman's great? You yeah, know? I mean, I think that I guess that's maybe what it is. Is I, I feel like you can retreat into the past, and I do it sometimes, but I don't want. I, I want to be present in the world right now. Um, I want to be present to my family, um, and I spend a lot of time traveling. Uh, so and and you, you know and 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 so much of my identity for since I've been a young man has been and, I, and i'm 45 now has been uh, has been rolled up in what i do which is as a performer being on stage all those sorts of things um mm -hmm. and i get a lot of joy performing you know i love that connection with an audience but at the same time it's not been without its balancing act to be 
present, you know, you're thinking about a lot of different things. And, I, and, and so I feel very, uh, like fortunate, uh, to be sort of have made a go through all these things and to have my family and my career and all these things. But at the same time, um, I don't know where I'm at, where I was, where I've been in my life is like trying to kind of make sense of things. And, and, and when you experience loss, um, and, and maybe the idea that you're going and, and, the, and the recognition that there's going to be more of that as you, as you get older, you yeah. know, um, yeah. then, uh, I don't know. i just, I felt like I, it put me on my back foot, caught off guard a number of times. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, this is a way, and, and this record is a way of just exploring that, uh, uncertainty. A lot of it's just sort of imaginative stuff too. Like it's not all, it's not like everything's I write solely with autobiography in mind. There's yeah. things that I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm like, this somehow makes sense. And often what I'll do is observe things from my own life, but observations in other people that I see in other people or things that have happened to other people. And the, the, those two things can almost go into a song to create um, an idea or a, a meaning that sort of hopefully just gets gets a little is a little broader than just this is about me you know what i mean um and i mean yeah. you know and, and and this is something that that you know there's a lot of there's a lot of me in it but there's also this the idea of using the imagination to go somewhere i also feel the thing i've really felt the last few years and and the irony of sort of having to sort of deliver this record through digital means right now and not be able to hit the road and the stage and play for people and congregate and and it, it, but it, and so but this idea of like making a tactile physical box set in this long form thought but i feel like i just wanted to do something imaginative and that would challenge me um occupy my mind and uh, and connect me to um reconnect me to myself but to also to these other people um but at the same time, I feel like the world, because of how quickly it's been spinning with communication and, uh, and, and, and everyone's commentary, you can absorb it if you want, like the world of, of, of social media, of, of media in general, of, uh, you can just fill your brain with other people's thoughts, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's intense, right? And we all kind of know that on some, and so I've tried to ex you know, extract myself from it completely. I want to be present in the real world, but I also yeah. But you but like, you stepped away. Like I remember you posted I, yeah. that thing where you said like, "Hey, I'm I'm stepping away for a little while to finish off this record." Yeah, I I, 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 I am not on social media. I post I write stuff on my typewriter now, and I have somebody post it for me, and I'll occasionally uh, get get sent something, or I'll read things now and then. But I I actually have found it helpful to not really be have these apps on my phone and do that I and mean, then i've been uh, that's been almost a year of that or whenever it was i posted that how, how does that feel um great yeah it's been good i've yeah. done so much more reading i've read a lot of books i've been reading a lot of nonfiction, and and i think like for me is i felt i feel i think what i felt is the pressure um no i i felt like I wanted to use my imagination and I wanted to follow my nose reading books that I was interested in. And by reading short form thoughts of other people's, I had no room for somebody's long form autobiography. I, like I would rather read a lot about one person and what their thoughts that to me is interesting. So people's memoirs are all of a sudden kind of like I'm, I'm interested in, you know, I'm reading Catherine, Kathleen Raines, uh, uh, autobiography right now that a friend gave me you know she's a poet and uh and and it's interesting and i don't know very much about her but it's just interesting reading about someone's life in in longer form detail yeah. and so that is sort of where i've been trying to, to go because i kind of feel like part of the challenge of the world right now is is the amount of information what to do with it and also if we're going to maybe contribute in some ways and solve problems a lot of it has to do with using our imaginations as in, in, a, in a way, and I'm not suggesting I'm solving any problems by making a quadruple record, but I'm trying to exercise the power that my own, I'm, try, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, I guess, like exercise the power of imagination, you know? But uh, I, 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 are you hopeful that we as listeners will, give this that long form? Are you hopeful that you release a quadruple record and we'll sit down and listen to the whole thing? I I'd certainly, it would be great if some people did. Um, I, I put a lot of time and effort into weaving it together so that there are artwork connections. And if you listen to it, there's phrases that reappear and little, but I, but the meaning of it is, it's not like it's a narrative. It's, uh, it's, a, it's about 
um, there's it's it's a it's a feeling that changes and it's an exploration. So the the point of it for me was to to see where it took me. The trip. What's the trip going to look like? I don't know what's if I'm going to put 44 songs on there. I want I'm going to go to some different places. Um, what somebody else gets out of the same trip listening to it, it's totally different. If people listen to it, it I, I feel like it does make some sense. Uh, in in it, 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 there's a reason for it being that long, and I, I was I tried to not get lazy about just going. Well, I'll just put that on there to fill the number forty three. You know, everything's sequenced in a certain way. The keys uh, often of the songs relate to each other. There's musical things that connect. There's lyrics that connect. Um, yeah, I mean, and call me call me crazy, but like that's been one of the nice things about I, I found in this um, pandemic is that. I've listened to fewer podcasts. I've listened to um, way more records, like fewer playlists. I've listened to more albums, top to bottom. And listening to your listening to your album in a row reminds me of what you were saying about um, turning your brain off from from think pieces and the internet. In that, I found it really hard at first. Right. I found it yeah. really hard when yeah. I got to track four, yeah. and I didn't love it immediately to not just yeah. you know move on to track five. Yeah. Like, but there's, there's been something really beautiful about it. I completely relate. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I flip through things, and I go, and if I can't give it the time, then I let it go, or what have you. And I recognize that this is in a this is coming in a in, in, into a climate where that's very easy to do. But where there's also time now where people can engage something longer form. Um, but I think the the point of it was to be like it's not meant to be. I was like, well, if, if it gets overlooked or if it's too much, that's okay. People can take a song if they like a song, put a couple songs on a playlist, you know? Um, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't really have a, a script by which I expect people to engage. I do think that the physical um, box set that we made, particularly the vinyl, because of the, the you know, it's this, it's, this is, this is it here. Right. So, and, uh, and, and then when the shelf there, you know, like this is, this is that, that's that shelf up there, right? So the, the, there's the four shelves that go together, and there's lots of, and the, I typed out all the lyrics on my on an old typewriter, and so I spent a lot of time. Um, and so if people engage it, they would maybe see the time that went into it. Uh, but what people take from it's that it, the weird thing is, is once you put it out there, it's out of your control. It's a nerve wracking yeah. thing because I you're always trying to go like, this is how you can engage it, or this is what it means. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what what it, I, I just it's done, I guess. So. Yeah, and, and I think I think if nothing else, I, I try my best ever since I got into this role and ever since I started making my own records to try and not bring too much meaning out of these things. What did you mean by this record? But I can tell you that I, as with this record, as with all of yours, I could really sense um, your work while it still sounded kind of effortless. Like I could still feel your work in it while it didn't feel like laborious. I really love the record, Joe. Well, thank you. Um, I, I, I feel um, like it, I felt in a creative place making it. Um, it took an immense amount of work and I had moments where I didn't know if it would, uh, why I was doing it. And I, and certainly you can get into a real second guessing game, making a short record. And with a one this long, I kept kind of going like, okay, is this a fool's errand? Um, but, um, there's a lot of songs that are close to my heart and, uh, and it's so full of sort of like me memories and, and the relationship to memories that I, I feel, like it was, it was just important for me to make it right now for myself personally. And so, um, that, that, and, and I am, and the artwork was also like a, a long form project that, uh, we worked on, I worked on with Ingram. And so I don't know, I, uh, I, I take, try and bring some detail to every record, but this was certainly the most, um, it's the hardest I've ever worked on anything. So thanks for giving us some time, man. <laughs> I, I can I can hear it. Joel, what are you looking forward to doing the most when this pandemic is over? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I love the stage. I love playing. So I'm looking forward to that congregation and singing songs, but not even so much for myself and my own shows uh, as being able to go stand in the corner of a bar and watch a friend play, you know? I mean, I, I was thinking about like my, uh, you know, a year and a half ago or whenever it was, I was on Boffin Island uh, on the west side of Ireland, you know? And, you know, at, this, at the pub with the, uh, just like trad music going on and just that that's shuttered right now. That makes me, you know, I, if I could beam myself into an Irish, to, just to be in the corner with a glass of whiskey watching an Irish session, you know? Like that's sort of one of the real joys of life. <laughs> yeah. I miss that's that. That's my answer, you know? man. Well, my my answer when people ask me is I want to play sessions again. You know, I yeah, play I mean, the that, same that, that's session. It. Social music, 
right? Social yeah. music. Every Sunday in Toronto for eight years now, I played the same session and I, I can't, I can't imagine how I'm going to feel when I get to do it again, you know? Yeah, that's it. I mean, for me, getting on stage and playing shows is great and rewarding, but that, that, that social component is, is it. That's what sort of, and I, I, I like being in the presence of people. Um, I'm loving the time with my family. Uh, there's been lots to learn from this. It's been, uh, uh, educational and humbling. And, uh, and I, and I like to take out of this when the world starts to gear back up again, I'd like to see what we want to gear up and how quickly we want to do that. And maybe there's some lessons to be learned in terms of like the speed that, that, that speed isn't everything, right? Like that the long road is actually uh, a healthier road and you, and you get surprised on the long road. I feel like, I, you know, it's not to say you, you obviously, you want people to be able to make a go of it, make a living, all these kinds of things. Um, but it would be, I do think that there's something to be learned with um, trying to not have our foot on the gas so hard all the time, you know, and, yeah, and I'm, Joel, I'm, I'm, gu yeah. I'm guilty of that, you know, so uh, yeah. I want to take, take, take that and, and learn from it. So. Well, listen, um, it's a great record. And next time you're in Toronto, come to our session and you can sit in the corner and have a glass of whiskey. There we go. I'll still I love it. probably make you sing a song. I'll probably yeah. still do it. <laughs> All right. I'm there, man. <laughs>